Pullman, we are just about ready for Pac-12 baseball between your Washington State Cougars and the Arizona State Sun Devils. Let's get you the starting lineup first for the visiting Sun Devils from Tempe. Uh, leading things off and playing left field is Harrison Williams. The designated hitter, Brandon Compton, will bat second. The catcher, Ryan Campos, hits third. And the cleanup spot is the first baseman, Jacob Tobias. Right fielder, Nick McClain, bats fifth. In the sixth spot is second baseman Ethan Mendoza. Center fielder Isaiah Jackson will bat seventh. Jax Ryan, the third baseman, in the eighth spot. And rounding out the order is shortstop Steven Ondina. On the mound for the Cougs, as we said, is the uh, right-handed senior Grant Taylor, who's been outstanding again, a 3.67 ERA and a 3-1 and record in his six starts so far this year. The defensive alignment for your Cougs will be Taylor on the mound, Jacob Morrow behind home plate, and we've also got uh, going around the horn, Joey Kramer at first base. Crew Park at second. The shortstop is Kyle Russell. The third baseman is Cole Kramer. Max Hartman will play right field today. Nate Swartz is in center field. And the left fielder is Kaysen Taggart with five home runs so far on the year. Taylor takes one more warm-up pitch, and that is means we are getting ready for baseball here stepping into the batter's box for the first time tonight is the left fielder for the sun devils harris williams williams 337 on the year team highs and hits with 29 doubles with eight on base percentage at 447 he's also stolen six bases in seven attempts Again, we got temperatures in the mid to upper 50s and cloudy conditions here in Pullman for the first pitch from Taylor. And a swing and a miss from Williams on the outside corner. And Taylor is ahead in the count here at 0 and 1. Fans still kind of streaming in here at Bailey Brayton Field. Taylor's second offering is another swing and a miss right over the heart of the plate. Williams swung over the top of it, and he's in the hole here now at 0-2. Taylor with 24 strikeouts in his 27 innings pitched so far this season. Here's the 0-2 pitch now to Williams, and he gets another swing and a miss. So three pitches, all swings and misses for Williams, and Taylor's got his first strikeout and his first out in this ballgame. And that's going to bring up Brandon Compton, the designated hitter tonight. Where's number 27 on his back? Team high 348 batting average. His slugging percentage outstanding at 652 on the year. First pitch from Taylor is a strike, so he's yet to fire a ball here through four pitches early on in this ball game. Compton also has a propensity to strike out, a team leading 24 strikeouts in 69 at-bats. Next pitch to Compton, another swing and a miss. And Taylor seems like he's got his A-plus stuff working here so far in the top of the first inning. Grant Taylor looks in for the signs, goes into his windup, and that one is smoked back up the middle for Compton. First base hit of the day for ASU. Compton rounding second, trying to stretch it into a double, and the throw is going to be just late from Hartman. I don't think they thought that Compton was going to have the audacity to try to take the extra base, uh, but he's in there easily for a double. Compton just kind of went with that pitch and guided it right back up the middle between the second baseman Park and the shortstop Russell on the second base side of the bag. So first base hit for ASU, first hit in this game as we play with one out in the top of the first inning. Up now is the catcher, Ryan Campos, the junior batting 260 on the year. Team leading six home runs, though, so you got to be careful of his power out to right field. First pitch from Taylor is an off-speed pitch, and that's hammered into the right field corner. Compton's going to score easily. That's going to roll all the way to the wall. Hartman is on it, but not before uh, Campos goes in the second and now rounds and heads to third with a triple. Hartman had a little bit of difficulty digging it out at the base of the wall right under the BECU sign. 
in right field, and that allowed Campos to take the uh, extra base and go all the way to third with the RBI triple. So no sooner than I said Taylor seemed to have the A-plus stuff working, a double and a triple, and it's one nothing ASU. And now Jacob Tobias comes to the plate, and that pitch is inside for ball one. Tobias, a left-handed hitter, 322 on the year. He is ASU's first baseman, and he's got... His catcher, Campos, just 90 feet away from making it 2 nothing. That one is hit right through the hole and into left field, and that makes it 2 nothing. Sun Devils with a third consecutive hit for ASU after opening this game with a strikeout. So a one-out, double, triple, and now single for the Sun Devils. And let's see if Taylor can settle things down here and find a little bit of a groove. Nick McLean at the plate, now the right fielder. Sophomore batting 186 on the year. A quick look over to first base. Now Taylor sets and delivers. That is just inside on the off-speed pitch at 84 miles an hour for a ball. Taylor, as you heard from head coach Nathan Choate, has been, again, a workhorse for this team. Second pitch now, swing and a miss for a strike one. It's one and one. Coach Choate said had his worst start in the first start of the year, but since then has been very, very reliable. Senior out of Murrieta Valley High School in California. Here's the 1-1 one, one up way high for ball two. So two and one now here to Nick McClain. Another look over to first base. And here comes Taylor swinging a miss for strike two, and we've got a throw to second base, and I think it's in time. A delayed call, but yes, it is, so there's two outs for the Cougs. Nice throw there by the catcher, Jacob Morrow, and Kyle Russell applies the tag. I think the second base umpire, Steve Corvey, was maybe just trying to make sure that Russell actually held onto the ball there because the throw was clearly in time. It was a dart from Morrow. And so Tobias gets cut down on the attempted steal. And Taylor can get out of the inning here with one more strike to McLean. Here's the 2-2. Up high. Count goes to full at 3-2. All right, Taylor sets. Here's the full count offering inside. He lost him. First walk issued in this ball game, and McLean heads to first base. And that's going to bring up the second baseman, Ethan Mendoza. This is his 18th start of the season. He's batting 250 on the year. All right, Taylor's first pitch to Mendoza. Foul down straight down into the ground for strike one. Home plate umpire Christopher Gonzalez takes a couple paces in front of home plate to pick it up, inspect the ball, and stick it back in his pocket there. Mendoza, the right-hander, taps the plate and gets set now for the 0-1 delivery from Taylor. Cougs pitcher fires up high, throw court over to first base, but back in time is Nick McLean. It might have been planned by the Cougs there. The ball was up high. Morrow caught it from a standing position and a snap throw down to first to try to get McLean leading off the back. All right, here comes the 1-1 now. Off speed, up high again to make it 2-1.
That was a changeup from Taylor in there at 84 miles per hour. He can run the fastball up in the 92-94 range, a throw back to first base. McLean back in plenty of time. And Taylor will get set on the mound again here for the Cougs. If you're just joining us, it's 2-0 uh, ASU here in the top of the first inning. Three consecutive hits, two of them of the extra base variety. Another throw over to first place. Taylor a little more serious about that one, but McLean back in time once again. All right, here's Taylor now. The 2-1. Off-speed pitch just a little high there, three and one. He's been missing high with that changeup when he's been trying to throw the off-speed delivery. So three and one count here, North for Mendoza. Let's see if he'll be taking or looking for the green light. Chop down and just foul, just foul. In fact, Kramer was over there and on it, but he kind of slid into the third base umpire, Gary DeFabio. So even though he got a glove on it, he might have had a tough time getting back to his feet and making the throw. So perhaps fortunate for the Cougs that it was called foul. Uh, but that's a strike. So it's three and two now. The count goes full here to Mendoza. Taylor was in this position with the last batter, McLean, and issued a walk. Let's see if he can get out of the inning here now without any further damage. The 3-2 to Mendoza, swung and popped high up in the air. I think it's going to go out of play. Morrill's got the mask off, but it's going to get into the stands about three rows deep. And somebody's going to get a souvenir ball there. And the count will remain full here at three and two. Well, the Pac-12 uh, continues to have a highly successful NCAA tournament. Colorado, the Buffaloes, a big win over the Florida Gators that just went final a moment ago. We'll get back to that in a second. Here's the three, two to Mendoza. Down in the dirt and another Sun Devil reaches base. Second consecutive walk issued by Taylor as Mendoza trots to first. McLean will take second, and that brings up the center fielder, Isaiah Jackson. A high-scoring affair between the Colorado Buffaloes and the seventh-seeded Florida Gators, and it was Colorado coming away with the win, 102-100. to K.J. Simpson, the outstanding point guard for the Buffs, with uh, a game winner with just two seconds left. He finished with 23 points to help the Buffaloes uh, advance to the round of 32. You may remember they had to win that play-in game uh, the other day. So all four uh, Pac-12 teams in the tournament now have advanced to the round of 32. And if you've been following along on social media, you know that all those, they call them units every time a conference team advances means more money into the coffers for the Cougs and the Oregon State Beavers as those units continue to mount up by each time that the Pac-12 teams advance here in the tournament. All right, so still two outs for Taylor as he's trying desperately to get out of this inning. And the lefty, Isaiah Jackson, now takes to the mound. Two runners on for ASU. They've already pushed two across. That first pitch from Taylor is outside for a ball, and it's 1-0. Jackson, 236 on the year. Five home runs, 18 runs batted in. Taylor looks back at second, now comes to the plate, and that one is Fallon out of the play down the left field side, left field line, excuse me, back toward the Cougar clubhouse, and the count is now even at one and one. Pretty decent turnout of fans here so far at Bailey Brighton Field. Here's the one one from Taylor, taken low and inside for ball two. Sun Devils, we mentioned at the top of the show, 10 and 11 overall, 3 and 3 in Pac-12 play. The Cougs are 12 and 8, 2 and 4 in the conference. Here is the 2-1 on the way here from Taylor. 
And that is swung on and popped up foul and out of play here once again. And a nice play by a youngster down there in the left field seats. Caught it on a hop. Count now two and two here for Jackson. Grant Taylor trying to get out of this inning after giving up two runs. He's got two ducks on the pond right now. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and hit into left field. Kaysen Taggart is underneath it, and Taylor is out of the inning, but not before Arizona State plates two runs. We go to the bottom of the first. It's 2-0 ASU here early. Hey, Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with spring savings on steel. Our AK Homeowner System battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real steel. Find yours. All prices SNW SRP. All right, welcome back to Bailey Brayton Field. 2-0 ASU as they strike on three consecutive hits, uh, all of them coming with one out against Grant Taylor there in the top of the first. Let's get you your batting lineup here for the Cougs. Max, Max Hartman, the right fielder, will lead things off. The shortstop, Kyle Russell, bat second. The left fielder, Kaysen Taggart, in the third spot. The cleanup hitter is the first baseman, Joey Kramer. Catcher Jacob Morrow bats fifth. Cole Kramer, the third baseman, bats sixth. Logan Johnstone is the designated hitter, making a, only his fifth appearance of the season here today. Uh, in the seventh spot, Nate Swartz, the center fielder, bats eighth. And Crew Park, the second baseman, will round out the lineup. As we mentioned, the starting pitcher for Arizona State is Thomas Burns, a right-handed freshman that comes in with a 3.86 ERA, 25 and two-thirds innings pitched in five starts so far this year. He has 22, or excuse me, 32 strikeouts and 22 walks, while opposing hitters are batting 180 against him. The defensive alignment uh, for Arizona State looks like this. Campos is the catcher behind home plate. At first base is Tobias. Ethan Mendoza at second. Steven Undina, the shortstop. The third baseman is Jax Ryan. Right fielder is Nick McClain. In center field is Isaiah Jackson. And the left fielder is Harris Williams. Here's Max Hartman taking the first pitch. A strike there from Burns to get things going here for the Cougs in the bottom of the first inning. Hartman out of St. Albert, Alberta. Off-speed pitch now up high from Burns, and the count goes even here at 1-1. One and one. Hartman has been outstanding for the Cougs. 366 on the year. Doesn't have home run power, but he has driven in 23 runs on the year. Swing and a miss for strike two. And that was an off-speed offering in there at 85 from Burns. So Hartman behind the count here, one and two. And the next pitch on the way from Burns, way up high. Eye level there for Hartman. And the count is even here at two and two. Burns shakes off one sign from his catcher. And now the 2-2 delivery swung on and pops straight up in the air. The shortstop, Ondina, calls off the third baseman, and he'll make the play on the infield dirt. So one up and one down here for the Cougs in the bottom of the first. Number one, Kyle Russell. And that's going to bring up the shortstop, Kyle Russell, out of University Place on the west side of the state. 
Swing and a miss from Kyle on strike one there. Went chasing for a pitch a little bit down and outside. Russell, 276 on the year. One home run, nine RBIs. Does have eight doubles as well. Russell checks his swing, but the home plate umpire, Gonzalez, says it caught the outer portion of the plate. So Russell quickly behind here with the count 0 and 2. The 0-2 from Burns, that one is just outside with a fastball at 93 for ball one. Russell was rated the 42nd best shortstop prospect in the country coming out of high school back in 2021. Here's the 1-2 to Russell, just got a piece of it, fouled it straight back into the netting, and the count remains at 1-2. Russell had to put out the top half of the first inning as they caught Jacob Tobias trying to steal second base. Russell smokes one up the middle, backhanded stab by Mendoza, who then fires over to first to get him by about a step. And the Cougs have two down here in the inning. Mendoza was shaded towards the second base bag. Russell really hit that one right up the middle. It just took Mendoza a step or two to slide over and make that backhand play. If he wasn't uh, positioned where he was, Russell probably has a single up the middle. That's going to bring up Kaysen Taggart now for the Cougs. First pitch upstairs, ball one. Taggart's been outstanding so far in a WSU uniform, batting 343. Five home runs and 22 RBIs. Slugging percentage at 643 so far on the year. Tied for eighth in the Pac-12 with those five home runs. That one catches the outside corner of the plate to the lefty Taggart, and it's one and one. Taggart is 6'6", 221 pounder out of Everett. That one just misses outside. Burns trying to find the same location there. Now two and one. Played two seasons at Centralia College. Was an All-American last year where he hit eight home runs. Here comes the 2-1. A swing and a miss from Taggart and the count goes even here at two and two. Taggart homer twice in Tuesday's win over Seattle U. Here's the 2-2. Up high, ball three. Count goes full here at 2-2. Two and two. All right, burn sets. Here's a 3-2 to Taggart, and it's put on the ground and through the hole and into left field as the Cougs have their first hit of the ball game. A seeing-eye single for Taggart, and let's see now if the Cougs might be able to capitalize as they send the first baseman and cleanup hitter Joey Kramer to the plate. Kramer, 321 on the year, four home runs, 16 RBIs with a 506 slugging percentage. Transfer from Cal State Northridge. First pitch to the right-hander fouled back into the netting. And Kramer taps the plate as he resets for the second pitch from Burns. Burns taking his time, now steps off the bag and now delivers. And that's going to be down low for a ball. It's 1-1. One one. Taggart, in case you were wondering, does have two stolen bases in three attempts so far this year. Cougs do like to take a bag when they can. 
Here's the 1-1, one, one, a big swing and a miss from Kramer, and it's one and two. Kramer, of course, was the Round Rock Classic Tournament MVP. Hit a big three-run homer against Kansas in a win there for the Cougs. Here's Burns with a 1-2 and another swing and a miss, and the Cougs have their third out here in the bottom of the inning. We go to the top half of the second. It is Arizona State 2, Washington State 0. This is Washington State Baseball from Learfield. Hey Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. All right, top half of the second inning now here from Bailey Brighton Field in Pullman. Arizona State struck twice in the top of the first to take a 2-0 lead here. Uh, over the Cougs. Cougs had a two-out base hit in the bottom of the first, but uh, Kaysen Taggart was left stranded there. Grant Taylor trying to find a rhythm after a pretty tough first inning. First pitch is a swing and a miss by Jax Ryan. And the count is 0-1. Taylor threw 27 pitches in that first inning. Next pitch, another swing and a miss on the changeup there to Ryan, and he's quickly ahead of the count here at 0-2. Oh Here's the 0-2 oh down to Ryan, and down low, Morrow does a nice job to keep it in front of him, and the count is 1-2. There's a one-two pitch on the way up high for ball two. Just missed high on the fastball with that one up near the collarbone, I guess you could say, of Jax Ryan, the third baseman for the Sun Devils. Here's the two-two in there for a strike on the outside corner. And Taylor has his second strikeout of the game. Started the first with a strikeout. Started the second with a strikeout as well. Let's see if he can, again, try to find a little bit of a rhythm here against the Sun Devils after they put two on the board against him in the first. Shortstop Steven Ondina making his first plate appearance here now for ASU. First pitch swing in, and it is out of play, back towards where they're building the indoor practice facility for the Cougs here, which is essentially right behind the press box and right field bleachers here at Bigley Brighton. 0-1 pitch now to Ondina, high and outside for ball one. Ondina is a senior, batting 305 on the year, one home run, four runs batted in. The 1-1 now swung on and lifted high down the left field line foul territory. Russell calls off the third baseman, Kramer, and makes the play about four steps from the uh, fencing there. And quickly two up and two down here for Taylor in the second. Looks like Kramer might have actually overrun that ball just a little bit and... 
Russell made the play all the way from shortstop in foul territory for the foul out. All right, that brings up Harris Williams, the leadoff batter. He struck out in his first appearance against Taylor to lead things off. And Taylor starts him off with a ball here, so it's 1-0. and Taylor's 1-0 is smoked into right field, and that's going to be on two hops against the wall. Hartman picks it up off the bounce, but no chance to catch Williams before he slides into the second base bag for a two-out double here in the second. Harris, or excuse me, Williams got the barrel of the bat on that one and poked it right out into right field. Two out double, and ASU is back in business again here in the second. That pitch down in the dirt. Morrow off with the mass to try to keep Williams over there at second base, and he does it quite well. So 1 0 here to Brandon Compton. Taylor looks in for the sign, looks back at second base, and now comes to the plate. And a check swing from Compton, but it's in there for a strike. It's one and one. Now Compton started the damage for ASU with that one out double in the first and would come around to score on the double from Campos. Here's the one one, a big swing and a miss for Compton and Taylor now ahead of the count here at one and two. Let's see if Big Grant can deliver on this pitch and get out of the inning with no damage done. Here's the one two up high ball two two and two. Butch making his way through the stands here at Bailey Braden, entertaining fans. The 2-2 pitch on the way, down low. Morrill kept it in front. The count goes full here at 3-2. and two. I mentioned that uh, Compton doubled and came around to score on the Campos double in the first. We initially thought that was a triple, but because of Hartman's struggles to deal with the ball, uh, at the right field wall, they ended up calling it a double and an error. That one is poked in the right field. Hartman is ranging over. He makes a diving play, but can't get it in the glove. It squirts out, and that allows Compton to, or excuse me, Compton to uh, slide in a second with an RBI double. Williams comes home to score, and the Sun Devils have another run on the board here at three and zero. Oh. Hartman tried to make a diving play out there in right field, and it looked for a second like he might be able to squeeze the glove around the ball, but it just kind of poked out, and that allows Harris Williams to score the third run of the ball game for ASU. Here's Ryan Campos now. First pitch inside ball one. And in consecutive innings, Taylor has gotten to that point where he's got Two outs and two strikes on a batter and just can't get out of the inning here. Here's the 1-0 as he looks back toward Compton and now comes to the plate inside again. Ball two. So Compton already with two doubles in two plate appearances here for the Sun Devils. The 2-0. And that's swung on fouled out of play to make it two to one to Campos. It's been a while since Grant Taylor has struggled for the Cougs. Here's the two one now. Just misses down low. It's three and one. All right, 3-1 here to Campos. Almost hit him 
He backs out of the way, but will take his base. And now the Sun Devils have runners at first and second here with two outs. So Jacob Tobias will step to the plate. He singled back in the first and then was thrown out trying to steal second. Morrow out to the mound to have a little bit quick word with his pitcher, Taylor, about what they want to do here. The second baseman, Park, is... Uh, Shifted well over towards the first base bag against the left-hander, Tobias. Here's the first pitch to the first baseman. And that misses for ball one. A lot of pitches thrown by Taylor here in the early going. That's the 49th already for him in less than two innings of work. Taylor looks back at second, now delivers. That ball is lifted high into the air in the left field. Taggart should be able to make a play for the third out, and he does so right on the foul line. And Taylor finally gets out of the inning, but not before giving up one more run. It's ASU three, WSU nothing. We head to the bottom of the second after this. Hey Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. All right, we're headed to the bottom of the second here. It is 3-0 Arizona State over Washington State. Cougs trying to get on the board for the first time here in this Pac-12 series against the Sun Devils. We mentioned uh, earlier in the broadcast that the Sun Devils are coached by Willie Bloomquist, which is, of course, a name that fans in the Northwest remember quite well. Bloomquist... Uh, was a Port Orchard native, went to South Kitsap High School, and spent 14 years in Major League Baseball after uh, leaving the Sun Devil program. That's where he played collegiately and spent several of those years with the Seattle Mariners, with, with the M's from 2002 to 2008. Kind of a utility infielder, could play kind of all over the place. And now he's returned to his alma mater and is his third season now as the coach of the Sun Devils. Jacob Morrow, the catcher, leading things off here for the Cougs in the bottom of the second. Morrow takes a strike on the first pitch here from Thomas Burns. Morrow out of Warrington, Oregon. And he hits one in the right field. That's going to get down for a base hit as McLean deals with it on a hop and quickly fires over to second to keep Morrow to a single. But the Cougs with a leadoff runner aboard here in the bottom of the first inning. Nice piece of hitting there by the catcher to kind of just go the other way with it and poke it out there in the right field for a base hit. And that brings up the third baseman, Cole Kramer. Cougs have... Two, two Kramers in their starting lineup. Cole, the third baseman, spells his Kramer with a C. And the first baseman, Joey, spells his with a K. First pitch to Kramer. Off-speed pitch taken at 82 miles an hour for a strike. Kramer sets in the batter's box. And the next pitch from Burns off speed again at 81 and again over the plate. So he's been 
in control of that delivery here so far in the early going, and Kramer finds himself in an 0-2 hole. Kramer out of Arlington, Washington, over on the west side of the state. Played at Lynn Benton Community College just outside of Corvallis, Oregon, actually. He was a 2023 All-NWAC second teamer. He's been great for the Cougs so far this season. 408 is what he's batting coming into this contest. Had to throw over to first, and now here's the 0-2 to Kramer. That's outside. Ball one. It's one and two. Catcher Campos try to frame it a little bit further inside, but Christopher Gonzalez, the home plate umpire, not buying it. And the count's one and two. Burns, the one-two offering, fouled straight back. And the count will remain here at one and two. All right, Burns sets on the mound. And the one two to Kramer outside again. The count goes even here at two and two. Now Burns put this in perspective uh, to have a, a freshman as your Friday night starter. ASU's uh, game notes say he's the first true freshman to start on the mound for the Sun Devils on opening night since Ike Davis all the way back in 20, or excuse me, 2006. So. 18 years ago, swing and a miss for Cole Kramer over the top, and he's down on strikes, and the Cougs have one out here in the second. And that brings up Logan Johnstone, making just his fifth appearance of the year, still looking for his first hit. Johnstone out of Los Gatos, California, is actually a Gonzaga transfer. He played at GU the last two years. Last year only uh, appeared in four games for the Zags. First pitch to Johnstone is inside for ball one. As a freshman in 2022, though, he appeared in 25 games uh, and batted 273 for Gonzaga with two RBIs. All right, here's the 1 0 to Johnstone. And it swung on and lifted high into the air. Foul territory down the third base line. Two Sun Devils are on it, and it's Jax Ryan who makes the play. So two down here for the Cougs in the second with Morrow still out there at first base after the leadoff single. And that's going to bring up Nate Swartz, the center fielder, who has been outstanding for the Cougs this year, really becoming an everyday starter for the first time at as a Coug, and he's responded, batting 347, 25 hits, three home runs, 16 RBIs, also has four stolen bases on the year. So 3 nothing ASU in the bottom of the second. Cougs with a man aboard after the leadoff single from Morrow, swinging a miss from Swartz, and it's 0-1. Burn sets, and here comes the 0-1 to Swartz, and it is chopped foul over towards the Cougar dugout. And the count goes to 0-2. Now Burns also, according to the Sun Devil notes, has been outstanding with runners on base this year. He's stranded over 95% of them. That's the sixth best number in the country so far this year. Here's the 0-2 to Swartz, swung on, fouled straight back. And the count remains here at 0-2. Swartz enter the weekend, tied for the Pac-12 lead, being hit by eight pitches on the year. 0-2, swing and a miss for strike three. 
and the Cougars are out of outs here in the second. We'll go to the top half of the third after this. It's ASU three, WSU nothing. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cougs! Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield under the broadcasting rights granted by Washington State University. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the expressed written consent of Washington State University and Learfield. Announcers are provided by Learfield and approved by Washington State University. All right, welcome back to Bailey Brayton Field. Coos have some work to do in this Opening game of a three-game Pac-12 series against Arizona State. The Sun Devils struck for two in the first and one in the second. They lead it 3-0 now here in the top of the third. Grant Taylor still on the mound for Washington State. First pitch to Nick McClain is down low for ball one. Taylor really was forced to work through those first two innings through 50 pitches, a swing and a miss now to McLean on the second pitch to even the count here at one and one. McLean walked in the first and was left stranded at second base. He's batting 186 on the year. Third pitch up high, it's two and one now to McLean, who is playing in right field for ASU today, batting, again, 186 on the year with one home run. 2-1 pitch now, taken inside and low for ball three, three and one. And after the struggles in the first two innings, Taylor does not want to let go of the leadoff batter here in the third. The 3-1 on the way, catches the outside portion of the plate, and it's three and two now to McLean. We mentioned Taylor started the first and second innings off with strikeouts, but then ran into trouble after that. Here's the 3-2, and it has swung on and fouled straight back over my head here in the uh, broadcast booth, and out of play. Count remains here at 3-2. and two. Taylor sets. Here's the 3-2 pitch to McLean outside. He lost them. So a leadoff walk here for the Sun Devils. Two walks for McLean in this ball game. And Taylor's going to have to work with the man on base here again to start the third. That brings up Ethan Mendoza. He also walked back in the first inning and was left stranded at first base in that frame. Now, McLean has stolen two bases in the year. That one is up the middle for a base hit. Kyle Russell can't get to it. Swartz is on it, though, and fires back inside. But nonetheless, it's two runners aboard here with nobody out in the third. First pitch swing in there for Mendoza. And lines one right back up the middle. That brings up Isaiah Jackson who flew out 
to end the first inning, but a dangerous hitter with five home runs on the year. Taylor looks back at second and then fires a changeup that fools Jackson for strike one. So McLean at second base after the leadoff walk. Mendoza out there at first after the single. And Grant Taylor still looking for his first out here for the Cougs. Another big swing and a miss by Jackson, and it's 0-2. Taylor, the 0-2 pitch inside. Morrow had to scramble to keep it in front of him, but it does a nice job with it, and the count is 1-2. and two. And you know that Nathan Choate is going to be watching the pitch count on his number one pitcher here, Grant Taylor. 1-2 pitch, swing and a miss from Jackson, and he goes down on strikes. That is the third strikeout in this ball game for Grant Taylor. And that might have been just what the doctor ordered here. Now your double play ball gets you out of the inning here. Taylor's next pitch will be his 63rd already here. We are in the top of the third inning, just one out. Jax Ryan at the plate. He struck out to lead off the second inning for ASU. Big swing and a miss from Ryan, and it's 0-1. Taylor looked back at second and now fires to the plate. Oh, just caught the top corner of the plate for strike two. And so Jax Ryan in an 0-2 hole against the Cougar starting pitcher. Pitch on the way. Morrow keeps it in front of him. And the ball makes it a 1-2 count. McLean at first, Mendoza, excuse me, McLean at second, Mendoza at first, Taylor trying to work his way out of trouble again here in the third. The one two pitch on the way, swing and a miss, back to back strikeouts for Grant Taylor. And those runners have no chance to advance. And that's going to bring up the shortstop, Steven Ondina. He flew out back in the second. He's batting 300 on the season. Looks like the scoreboard here at Bailey Brayton forgot an, an, an N in Ondina's name. They are spelling it Odina. First pitch from Taylor up high, ball one. See if Taylor can buckle down here and get out of this inning. Next pitch. Swung on and lifted in the left field. That's going to be a base hit. Rounding third and scoring is McLean sliding in just under the throw from Kaysen Taggart, and it's 4 0 Arizona State. Not particularly hard hit, but Ondina just kind of went with it and lifted it out there into left field and Taggart actually made a better throw than I was expecting. He had a chance to get uh, McLean at the plate, but the throw was just not in time. In the meantime, Mendoza was able to advance to second base. So still two runners on here for Taylor, who's now given up four runs in this ball game. And that brings up the leadoff hitter, Harris Williams, struck out in the first, doubled and scored back in the second. 4-0 ASU here in the third. And Taylor now up to 69 pitches in this ballgame. 1-0, chopped to Park at second. Underhand scoop to, th uh, to the first baseman Kramer. And Taylor is finally out of the inning, but not before giving up one more. We go to the bottom half of the third after this. It's Arizona State with the 4-0 lead. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with spring savings on steel. Our AK Homeowner System battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real steel. Find yours. All prices SNW SRP. Hey Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. All right, welcome back to Bailey Brayton Field here in Pullman, Arizona State with a 4 nothing lead over the Cougs. We've played two and a half innings. Let's pause 10 seconds now for stations to identify themselves on the Washington State Sports Network. Pullman Regional Hospital and Washington State University Athletics are partners in excellence as the official hospital of Washington State University Athletics. Pullman Regional Hospital provides quality care and support to over 500 student athletes. Let the team that takes care of the Cougs take care of you. Go Cougs. All right, the Cougs with a four-run deficit here against a tough customer in Thomas Burns, the freshman out of Wisconsin who's on the mound for Arizona State. First pitch to Crew Park, the second baseman. Off speed is in there for a strike, and it's 0-1. Cougs have mustered two hits, but not really threatened here against Burns in the early going. That pitch down to the dirt for ball one. It's 1-1 one and one to the second baseman, Park. Park so far this year has started every game of the season for the Cougs, batting 267. No home run, so not really... A power hitter as a second baseman, of course. That one is chopped high in the air to the first baseman, Tobias, who underhands to Burns for the first out of the inning. Just to finish that thought, uh, no home runs for the second baseman, but has driven in uh, 12 runs on the year and reached base at nearly a 39% clip. But the ground out for Park... This is the first out of the inning for the Cougs, and that brings things back to the top of the order for Max Hartman, who flew out in his first time up to lead off the game for the Cougs in the bottom of the first. First pitch on the way from Burns. Over the heart of the plate for a strike. 92 miles per hour, and Hartman will look to try to get something going here for the Cougs in the bottom of the third. 0-1 delivery on the way. Big arcing curveball, 78 miles per hour, but missed high, and it's one and one. Not sure we'd seen that pitch yet from Burns so far in this game. Here's the one one Hartman foul tip, and the count will go to one and two. Hartman, <clears throat> again, batting 366 on the year. 361 now if you go for live stats after his flyout earlier uh, in this ball game. Does have 23 runs batted in and nine stolen bases on the year. Woo! That's a curveball that didn't curve, and it went over the catcher and the home plate umpire's head. I mean, he just completely lost that one. And the count now even at 2-2 two and two to Hartman. Here comes the next offering, and that one is... Could get down for a base hit in center field. Just kind of found the sweet spot. It was too far in front of the center fielder Jackson and too far of a run for the... Second baseman Mendoza and the shortstop Mendina and just kind of softly lifted single puts a runner on base here for the Cougs in the third. So Hartman with his first hit of this ball game. Just the third hit of the game for the Cougs. 
And that brings up the shortstop, Kyle Russell. Again, Hartman does have nine stolen bases on the year. We'll see if the Cougs want to put him in motion. Russell squared to bunt and then backed out of it. The catcher, Campos, took a look over to first to kind of chase Hartman back to the bag. Hartman again out of Alberta. Here's the one to Russell. Big swing and a miss from Russell makes the count go even here at one and one. Russell looks back into the dugout to get the signal from the bench. And here comes the 1-1. One, one. Nope, he's going to fire over to first to chase Hartman back to the bag. So he knows, like I just told you, that Hartman can be a threat to run. Nine stolen bases in 12 attempts on the season. The 1-1 one, one to Russell. Outside, ball two. So maybe, just maybe, we're starting to see Burns labor a little bit for the first time here so far in this ball game. He's been in control most of the way. Here's the 2-1 to Russell. And that ball was tipped foul. Count goes even here at two and two. Pitch count for Burns, nowhere near what we've seen for Grant Taylor. He is at 46 pitches. Next one will be 47. 2-2. Two -two. Just got a piece of it. Did Russell to stay alive in this at bat, and the count remains even here at two and two. Four nothing, Arizona State here in the bottom of the third inning. Cougs looking to get something going here. After a one out single from Hartman, they throw back over to first to chase Hartman back to the bag again. But Hartman back in plenty of time. All right, Russell gets set. Here comes the 2 2 pitch. From Burns, nope, he'll fire back over to first again. Very concerned about Hartman over there at first. That's the third time he's thrown back that way. All right, Burns the freshman to Russell the senior and catches him for strike three with a swing and a miss and an off-speed pitch again at 82 miles per hour. And the Cougs have two down here in the third. That is strikeout number four here so far in the game for Burns. And that's going to bring up Kaysen Taggart. Had a two-out single back in the first, but was stranded there after a Joey Kramer strikeout to end the inning. First pitch from Burns to Taggart inside, ball one. Cloudy skies here in Pullman, but no rain. Temperature right around 56 degrees. Next pitch from Burns misses outside at 85 miles per hour for ball two. So hitters count here for Taggart at 2-0. Does have five home runs on the season to lead the team. Throw back over to first to chase Hartman back again. And no sooner than I say no rain here in Pullman, as I look at the uh, weather app on my phone, it does say rain is expected to start in about 15 minutes' time. Doesn't look like it's going to be too heavy, though. Here's the 2-0 offering, and that's a strike. And then Campos drops it and then actually kicks it back toward the ASU uh, dugout, but Hartman was not ready to run. Not sure if he would have made it if he did. But uh, Campos now hands the ball to his pitcher, 
in front of the mound and wants to have a quick word with him, maybe to try to make sure they're not getting their signals crossed here. 4 nothing ASU. We're in the bottom of the third. Sun Devils with two in the first, one in the second, and one in the third. Four runs on seven hits and no errors for ASU. No runs on three hits and one error for Washington State. The 2-1 to Taggart. Swung on and fouled back toward the Sun Devil dugout. And the count will go even here at 2-2. Two and two. All right, Burns sets on the mound. Here comes the 2-2 to Taggart, swung out of the high cheese, and he goes down swinging, 92 mile per hour fastball, and Burns gets out of the inning. The Cougs leave another one stranded. We'll go to the top of the fourth after this. This is Washington State Baseball from Learfield. Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. All right, Grant Taylor back out on the mound here for Washington State as they are in their crimson colored jerseys and caps with white pants. The visiting Sun Devils of Arizona State in gray jerseys and pants with uh, maroon lettering and maroon hats here for this series opening Pac-12 conference game. Brandon Compton to lead things off for ASU. Big swing and a miss for Compton and Taylor quickly ahead in the count here. 0-1. 4 nothing ASU as we play here in the top half of the fourth inning. That pitch to Compton was the 71st pitch of this ball game for Taylor. Next pitch on the way is lined back at the middle. Russell can't get a glove on it and a leadoff single here uh, to start things off in the fourth for Brandon Compton. So he now has two doubles and a single. So three of the eight hits in this ball game for ASU belong to the designated hitter, Brandon Compton. We mentioned the pitch count on Taylor so far in this game. Here's the first pitch to Campos, the catcher, down in the dirt for ball one. Uh, Taylor has thrown as many as 105 pitches on the season. He did that back on February 23rd in that Round Rock Classic as the Cougs knocked off number 24, Kentucky, going six innings. Off-speed pitch way up high, and the count goes even here at 1-1. One and one. I'm sorry, count goes to 2-0 and oh now here against Campos. Taylor also threw 100 pitches against Utah back on March the 8th. Here comes a 2-0. Chop to the third baseman. Kramer can't get the lead runner, but fires over to first for the first out of the inning. He took a look, but he didn't think he was going to be able to get Brandon Compton, so fired over to Joey Kramer uh, for the first out. Kramer to Kramer as we go 5-3 on the putout. So Campos is down. Compton now at second base with one out, and that brings up Jacob Tobias, the first baseman. 
First pitch to Tobias, big swing and a miss at a ball down in the dirt, and it's 0-1. Tobias singled back in the first, flew out in the second. Taylor will look back at Compton, then comes high and inside for ball one. All right, Taylor, look back at second, now delivers, and that ball is chopped to Kramer at first. It stays fair. Kramer will take it to the bag himself. Compton advances over to third on the ground out, but two outs now here for the Cougs in the fourth. Joey Kramer was kind of right on the foul line there, uh, but made the play inches from it going foul and then just took about three steps to the bag to retire Tobias. Nick McLean. On now for the Sun Devils, up now for the Sun Devils, I should say. Big swing and a miss from McLean there. He has walked in each of his first two times up to bat, was stranded in the first, came around to score in the second. Here's Taylor with the 0 1 to McLean. In there for a strike, got him looking 0 and 2. Eighty pitches now for Taylor in this ball game. Here's the 0-2 to McLean and it hit him. Right on the right shoulder. That one was well inside. And now two runners on base here for the Sun Devils. So McLean has reached three times without the benefit of a hit. Two walks and a hit by pitch. And now runners to the corners here for the Sun Devils with two out. That brings up Ethan Mendoza, walked in the first, singled in the third. Batting 261 on the season. Taylor sets the first pitch to Mendoza, is taken for a strike, 0-1. All right, Taylor looks in. Here's the 0-1 to Mendoza, and it is hit on a hop to Russell. He'll make the play. Fire over to first for the third out of the inning. And Taylor finally keeps the Sun Devils off the scoreboard. We go to the bottom of the fourth after this. It's 4-0 ASU. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment. Located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us. With over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe. Our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cooks! It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with spring savings on steel. Our AK Homeowner System battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real steel. Find yours. All prices SNW SRP. Back inside the Learfield Network studios, my name is Jacob Munch as Washington State will look for their first run of the ball game in just a moment. Quick look at the other Pac-12 game that is underway. Arizona did not score in the top of the first in Eugene. The Ducks are coming to bat any moment at home at PK Park. Meanwhile, in the top 25, two ranked matchups ongoing in the top of the fifth. Number 7 Texas A&M leads 21st ranked Mississippi State 1-0 from College Station. And top ranked Arkansas trails 23rd ranked Auburn 3-2 in the top of the fourth. Now, back we go to Pullman. All right, Jacob, thanks very much. Joey Kramer will lead things off here for the Cougs in the bottom half of the fourth. 
Cougs still looking to push their first run across against Thomas Burns, the outstanding freshman starting pitcher for Arizona State. They've left a man on base in each of the first three innings here today. And Burns starts Kramer off with a strike. Next pitch from Kramer is lined into right field for a leadoff single. So that's a good start for the Cougs. First man aboard here against Burns. And that brings up the catcher, Jacob Morrow, who singled in his only at bat to lead off the second inning. We mentioned last inning, Burns Kind of showing his first signs of uh, laboring just a little bit. His pitch count now up to 57. This first pitch to Morrow will be his 58th. And that is taken just outside for a ball. Now, conversely, Grant Taylor is already at 83 pitches through four innings for Washington State. ASU's really made him work. All right, throw over to first. Kramer back in plenty of time. Morrow batting 340 on the year. Now actually 354 as the live stats factor in his hit back in the second. Morrow takes that pitch, low and outside for ball two. So he's well ahead of the count here at 2 and 0. Oh. Coop's fortunate to have two quality catchers in Morrow and Will Cresswell. Another throw over to first base, but back in time again is Joey Kramer. And Coach Joe has done a nice job of just kind of alternating his catchers for most of the season. Here comes the 2-0 to Morrow. Take in for a strike right over the plate, two and one. Morrow has started 13 games so far this year. Cresswell, seven on the season. Here's the 2-1, swing and a miss for Morrow, and the count goes even here at 2-2. Two and two. All right, Burns fires over to first. I think that was to avoid the pitch clock winding down because we saw the catcher Campos just kind of signal over to first base for him to throw it there. I think they were trying to avoid the pitch clock expiring. Here comes the 2-2 now here to Morrow with nobody out here in the bottom of the fourth. Swing and a miss and another strikeout for Burns as Morrow goes down swinging. And that is strikeout number five on the evening for Burns. I beg your pardon. I was ahead of the live stats there. It now has updated six strikeouts here for Burns. As we mentioned, he's coming into this game 32 Ks in 25 and two-thirds innings pitch. Cole Kramer takes a strike outside on the outside portion of the plate, I should say, for strike one. Third baseman struck out in his first appearance back in the second. Here's the 0-1, just misses. Maybe just an inch or two off the location of the last pitch, but the first one caught the plate, this one didn't, and it's one and one. Kramer batting 403 on the year for the Cougs. And that one taken again right on the outside corner. He kind of shakes his head in disgust. He thought it was a ball again, but instead it's one and two here against Kramer. Cougs trying to get something going against Thomas Burns and the Sun Devils. Another throw over to first to chase Joey Kramer back. Burns sets, and here comes the delivery. 
way up high for ball two. It's two and two. Four nothing ASU, bottom of the fourth inning. Kuz got a leadoff single from Joey Kramer. And now it's Cole Kramer trying to advance him here with one out in the frame. And big cut on that one. That's back toward the beer garden down there in right field. And the count remains even here at two and two. All right, burn sets. Taking his time. Here comes a 2-2. Kramer fouled back to almost the exact same spot toward the beer garden and the indoor practice facility that they are constructing here in Pullman. It will be used for football and inclement weather. Track will be able to use it. Women's soccer, I'm sure, as well. A lot of steel has been put up for that structure here so far. Can't wait to see it completed. Here's the 2-2 to Kramer. High and outside. And the count goes full here at three and two. Looked like Campos was going to attempt a snap throw over to first, but he dropped the ball before he could make the throw. So Joey Kramer's on at first. Cole Kramer's here at the plate with one out in the fourth. Here's the 3 2 pitch from Burns, swung on and fouled out of play once again. Kramer just fighting off pitches here, really making Burns work. Trying to get him to throw something he likes. Right, Burns sets on the mound. And here comes a 3-2, swing and a miss. And now Kramer taking off for second, and he's going to be cut down. So it's a strike him out, throw him out, double play. And ASU gets out of the inning unscathed again. We go to the fifth after this, 4-0 Sun Devils. Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. All right, we've played four innings here in Pullman. It's 4 nothing Arizona State over Washington State. Earn your bragging rights at Northern Quest with more slot machines, table games, restaurants, lounges, and luxury hotel rooms than anyone else in the region. Northern Quest, yes, the best. More at northernquest.com. Grant Taylor back out there on the mound here for the Cougs as we begin the fifth inning. He's thrown 83 pitches so far. We mentioned earlier his season high is 105. First pitch swing in, and that is on the ground for Cole Kramer to fire over to Joey Kramer for the ground out and the first out of the inning. That was Isaiah Jackson, the center fielder, who put it on the ground on the first pitch. So one up and one down for the Sun Devils, and that's going to help uh, the pitch count for Taylor as he tries to get through five and Maybe a little more here for Nathan Choate and the Cougs here on this Friday night Pac-12 series opening game between the Cougs and the Sun Devils. Jax Ryan at the plate now. And first pitch swing it again. That's going to be into the left field corner. It's fair. Taggart hustles over, but Ryan is going to go into second base with a one-out stand-up double here in the fifth. 
Jax Ryan struck out in each of his first two appearances. He decided he didn't want to mess around anymore. And first pitch swing and just kind of laces one into the left field corner. Ninth hit of the ball game already for the Sun Devils. And the fifth, by my count at least, of the extra base variety. All right, so here is the first pitch to Steven Ondina that misses inside for a ball. It's 1-0. and So now quickly, Taylor has to work with runners in scoring position again. The look back at second, now the delivery. That's a foul out of play, again towards that beer garden out there down the right field line. Again, decent amount of fans here in Pullman for this Friday night ball game. Next pitch to Ondina is chop foul up the left field line. Kevin Haynes out of the dugout to chase it down for the Cougs. Ondina batting 311 on the year. Here's the 1 1 from Taylor outside, ball two. All right, Taylor sets again, takes a look back at second. Now comes to the plate, swing and a miss for strike three against Ondina. Now two down here for Taylor and the Cougs in the fifth. Big cut from Ondina on that one. And that's strikeout number five for Taylor. And that brings up the leadoff man, Harris Williams, the left fielder, struck out in the first, doubled and scored in the second, and grounded out back in the third. First pitch up high, ball one. So it's Jax Ryan out at second place with a one-out double. Taylor trying to retire Harris Williams and get out of the inning. Look back at second again. Now comes to the plate. Swing and a miss from Williams. It's one and one. Ninety-two pitches now for Taylor as he works with two out here in the fifth. And that one's fouled back out of play over the left field stands. And the count is one and two. We mentioned possibility of rain here in Pullman over the next few minutes. Don't see any sprinkles falling just yet, though. Here's Taylor with the one, two on the way to Williams. Up high, ball two. Four nothing ASU as we play here in the top half of the fifth inning from cloudy Pullman, Washington. Cougs looking for win number 13 on the year. Look back at second. Here's the 2-2 to Williams. Swing and a miss. Taylor gets out of the inning with a strikeout again. His sixth. Will he return for another inning, though, in the sixth? We'll find out in a little bit. We go to the bottom half of the fifth after this. It's 4-0 ASU. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open a nice cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. 
A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. All right, Washington State still trying to solve the puzzle that is Thomas Burns, the Arizona State freshman who is actually from Wisconsin originally, has, uh, for the most part, baffled Cougar hitters here so far through four innings. He's allowed four hits, uh, no runs, no walks, and he has struck out seven. And he came into this ball game with a 3.86 ERA, 101 record in five appearances, all of them starts. Opposing batters batting just 180 against him on the season. Cougs with four hits, but no runs to show for it here so far. And leading things off for Washington State is Logan Johnstone. The Gonzaga transfer making just his fifth appearance of the season for Washington State, still looking for his first hit on the year. Johnstone takes the off-speed offering up high for ball one. And here comes the 1-0 now from Burns. And that's going to miss high as well. So Johnstone now with the hitter's count here at 2-0. Next pitch on the way from Burns. Up high again. Ball three, three and oh. Here comes a 3-0, and that just catches the outside corner of the plate with a fastball at 90 miles per hour to make it three and one. Johnson again played the last two seasons at Gonzaga. Here's the 3-1. Up high, and he draws a walk. So Johnstone starts off the fifth with a leadoff walk. And let's see if the Cougs can try to cash him in. It's going to bring up Nate Swartz next. Center fielder struck out in his only plate appearance back in the second. Swartz, though, I mentioned early in the broadcast, has really flourished for the Cougs this year, seeing everyday playing time. I'll get to his numbers in just a second. Here's the first pitch from Burns to Swartz, and that is lined in the left field corner. It's going to get down fair. That could score Johnstone all the way from first. He is rounding third and heading home. Here comes the relay throw to the plate. Campos can't hang on. The Cougs are on the board at 4-1, to one, and there goes Swartz sliding into third base as he alertly took the extra bag, and the Cougs finally push one across here against Burns. It's 4-1. to one in the fifth. Nice piece of hitting there by Nate Swartz, just kind of lining one into the left field corner, scoring Johnstone all the way from first base. And just to finish my thought on Swartz's improvement year to year, last year he really struggled, batting just 184 on the year. This year, so far, 347 coming into this ball game. I mean, almost doubling his batting average uh, at starting 19 of the Cougars' 20 games this year, and that was his 17th run batted in on the season. So Cougs on the board here at 4-1. to one. That brings up Crew Park, the second baseman. He takes a strike on the first pitch from Burns. So they will call that a double, as I suspected, from Swartz and advancing to third on the throw. The 0-1 to Park, and that is lined in the center field, but right at Jackson, who's underneath it. Swartz tags up, and he's heading home. And the Cougs quickly plate two here in the fifth, and we've got ourselves a ball game now here at 4-2. So Park with the sacrifice fly 
to bring home Swartz. And just like that, the Cougs have cut the deficit in half. And that brings things back to the top of the order for Max Hartman, who flew out in the first and singled and was stranded back in the first. Hartman now batting 369 on the year. First pitch from Burns out, or on the outside corner for strike one. So Burns now up to 78 pitches. And again, finally seeing him having to labor a little bit here this inning and in the previous inning as well. Second pitch is a ball, so it's one and one. And that one down low to Hartman. So Hartman ahead of the count here at two and one. The two one to Hartman. Swung on and lifted high in the air in right center field. Not going to have enough to get out. Underneath it is McLean. The right fielder gets called off by Jackson, the center fielder. And they make the play in right center. So two down for the Cougs here in the fifth. And that's going to bring up the shortstop, Kyle Russell. Russell lined out in the first and struck out back in the third. Squares to bunt, then backs off. He did that in his previous at bat as well on the first pitch. And that was after the uh, one out single from Hartman back in the third. Russell batting 270 on the year. And Burns steps off the bag. Pitch clock was winding down. He's gonna try to reset. Again, Russell out of Curtis High School over in University Place near Tacoma. Entered the weekend tied for fifth in the Pac-12 with eight doubles on the year. The 2-0 from Burns. Outside, ball three. I was halfway waiting for Christopher Gonzalez to say that might have caught the outside corner of the plate, but it just missed. Here's a 3-0 to Russell. That's well outside, and we've got a two-out walk. A good eye by Russell to lay off some of those pitches from Burns, and that's going to bring up Kaysen Taggart. So Burns has really seen that pitch count increase this inning. In fact, we're going to have a meeting at the mound right now. And there are a few relievers, uh, or I should say a reliever at least, warming up in the ASU bullpen. I don't see a signal to the bullpen yet. I think they're just going to chat things out here at the mound. And why they, while they do that, I'll tell you that Coors Light Mountain Cold Refreshment is made to chill. Proud partner of Cougar Athletics. Celebrate responsibly. So 4-2, Arizona State still in the lead, but the Cougars have cut their deficit in half with two runs here in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Meeting of the mound is now over. Boy, hearing, uh, you're probably catching this on our crowd microphone, a little lively conversation here between <laughs> Cougars head coach Nathan Choate and the Christopher Gonzalez, the home plate umpire, telling Coach Choate, you're done, as in this conversation is over. And seems to be some confusion on the field right now. I don't know if we had a substitution somewhere that they're trying to clear up. No, I guess not. All right, so. The Cougs still have Kyle Russell out there after drawing that walk, and they've pushed two runs across here already in the inning, and that brings up Kaysen Taggart, who singled back in the first, batting 347 of the year, five home runs, 22 runs batted in. First pitch from Burns, taken for a strike.
Taggart has uh, been brilliant at the plate for the Cougs so far this season. I'll get to some more of his numbers here in just a second. The 0-1 is down low and inside. He's a tall drink of water, six foot six. Was an All-American at Centralia College last year. Has four two-hit games in his last five contests entering this one. He's already got one hit today. Let's see if he can make it two. That one is down low for ball two, two and one. Here comes the 2-1 to Taggart. Swung on and lifted into left center field. That's back towards the warning track, and it's over the wall. A two-run tying homer for Kaysen Taggart here in the fifth inning, and the Cougs have tied it up here with four runs in the frame. How about that? That ball just kept drifting and drifting until it carried over the wall just to the right of the scoreboard in left center field. Kaysen Taggart, a two-run homer to tie this ball game. And the Coos continue to frustrate Thomas Burns here in the fifth. Just what the doctor ordered. And that brings up Joey Kramer, who takes a big cut at that first pitch and fouls it straight back into the netting. A big fly from Case and Taggart, his team leading sixth of the year to tie the game at four. Next pitch to Kramer misses for a ball. It's one and one. Four runs across here for the Cougs in the fifth. Off-speed pitch, just misses to Kramer. It's two and one. So, Burns now up to 92 pitches here in this ball game. Here comes number 93. Off-speed, catches the outside corner of the plate, two and two. That one coming in at 80 miles an hour. The 2-2 to Kramer. Swung on, through the hole, another base hit for the Cougs as that gets between the third baseman Ryan and the shortstop Andina and into left field. So the single for Kramer, that's the one, two, third hit of the frame for the Cougs to go along with a pair of walks as well. And this might be it for Burns now. We've got another meeting at the mound. Manager Willie Bloomquist out of the bullpen and he's going to take the ball from the starting pitcher Thomas Burns. We'll have a pitching change and we'll take a quick break and tell you who's coming out of the bullpen for the Sun Devils after this. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cooks! That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. All right, so that'll do it for Sun Devil starting pitcher Thomas Burns. He is still accountable uh, for one runner on base. That is the first baseman, Joey Kramer. Uh, but he exits after four and two-thirds innings pitch. He gave up four runs, all of them earned on seven hits and also had seven strikeouts on the day. Coming into the ballgame now is number 22, 
Ben Jacobs. He's a sophomore left-hander out of Huntington Beach, California, transferred to ASU from UCLA. He is six foot one, 190 pounds. Jacobs making his ninth appearance of the season for ASU. He has a 3.12 ERA, a one-to-one record. In 17 and one-thirds innings pitched, he's allowed 11 hits, 10 runs, six of them earn, and he has 29 strikeouts versus only eight bases on balls. Opposing hitters batting just 183 against him. So a high volume strikeout pitcher out of the bullpen uh, trying to settle things down here for ASU after Burns gave up four runs in this frame. Here's the first pitch from the left-hander in there for a strike at 90 miles an hour. And it's the catcher, Jacob Morrow, at the plate now after the two-out single from Kramer. Next pitch swung on. Morrow lifts one in the left field, going back to the wall. And that's going to clear the wall as well. A second homer here in the fifth inning as Morrow jacks one out to left. And the Cougs have their first lead in this ball game at 6-4. to four. All six runs coming here in the frame. Two of them, or excuse me, four of them coming on two run homers off the bats of Case and Taggart, and now Jacob Morrow. How quickly has this game turned around? The Cougs were really struggling against Thomas Burns and trailing four to nothing after seeing their starting pitcher Grant Taylor struggle early in this ball game, but now they've completely turned it around with six runs here in the fifth inning. Cole Kramer now at the plate. The second pitch is a ball, so it's 2-0 and oh here quickly now to Kramer. What an explosive inning this has been for the Cougs. And that one lifted foul and out of play into that beer garden. Ooh, somebody tried to make a one-handed grab out there, but it bounces off the concrete. So, Cole Kramer at the plate now, batting 397 on the year. One home run, 16 RBIs. Pitch from Jacobs. Swung on and lined foul. Off the Miller Indoor Baseball Training Facility out there. In right. Kramer is the ninth batter of the inning for the Cougs. And that one is put on the ground. Chopper right to the, uh, the third baseman, Ryan, who fires across. And the side is finally retired for Washington State here in the fifth, but not before the Cougars put six runs on the frame. We go to the sixth. It's now Washington State six, Arizona State four. <laughs> Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Director's Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Director's Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Director's Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Director's Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! All right, Grant Taylor back out on the mound for Washington State here to start the sixth inning. He has at 95 pitches already in this ball game, but Nathan Chope showing some faith in his big senior right-hander to see if he can perhaps work through six innings here against the Sun Devils. Leading things off for ASU is the designated hitter, Brandon Compton, as he takes strike one from Taylor. All Compton has done 
is have two doubles and a single in his three plate appearances here so far today. Oh, that one Compton thought was low and outside, but it catches the outside corner. So it's 0-2 here against ASU's DH. Taylor with the 0-2. Up high and inside, and it's 1-2. and two. We saw Thomas Burns, ASU starter, start extremely strong and then tire. And we're kind of seeing the opposite from Taylor. He started, he struggled from the beginning. And that one is lined, but right to the glove of Cole Kramer, who snags it out of the air for the leadoff out. So the line out from Compton, gonna bring up the catcher, Ryan Campos. So Taylor struggled early, again, giving up two runs in the first and one each in the second and third, but has since dialed things in a little bit. Whereas Burns was almost untouchable early, and then the wheels fell off for him in the fifth. First pitch to Ryan Campos is just outside for a strike, or excuse me, for a ball. 1-0. and oh. And... That might do it for Taylor, just due to sheer number of pitches. That was pitch number 100. Nathan Choate is out of the dugout. We've got a meeting on the mound. Let's see if he takes the ball from his starter or if they're going to just have a little chat here. There is activity, of, as you would expect, in the Cougar bullpen. Nope, they're going to leave Grant out there. Maybe just wanted to make sure, hear it from a starting pitcher himself, that he was okay to continue going. Taylor says, yeah, coach, I got this, <laughs> or something like that. And he will continue here to pitch in the sixth. You know Choate would love to see his starter get through six before turning things over to the bullpen. We'll see how this plays out. Here's the one out of Campos. In there for a strike. Didn't look too tired on that one at 92 miles per hour. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Swung on right off of Taylor's glove and into center field. Boy, he had to do something to get out of the way of that one just to not get hurt, but it was kind of back towards his glove hand side uh, and into center field for a base hit. And now Choate out of the mound again, and I think that is going to do it. We see the bullpen fence open. Let's take a timeout for the pitching change. We'll tell you who's coming in for the Cougs after this. Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cougs! All right, into the ball game now for Grant Taylor is Carson Judd. He is a 6'3", 189-pound redshirt junior transfer. Originally from Spokane, went to Central Valley High School and pitched for Yakima Valley Community College. He is a lefty. And on the season, Carson Judd will be making his fifth appearance as a Cook. He has an 8.10 ERA in three and a third innings pitched. He's allowed three hits, four runs, three of them earned. And he has six strikeouts against four walks. He's appeared in games against UC Riverside, twice in the UCLA series, and then one earlier this week against Seattle U when he pitched by far the most he has this season, throwing 49 pitches in one and two-thirds innings against 
Seattle U. So Carson Judd in for Grant Taylor, who finishes after throwing 102 pitches, five and a third innings, 10 hits, four runs, three of them earned, six strikeouts, and four walks. He is still responsible for Ryan Campos out there at first base, so we can't quite close the book on Grant just yet. But it'll be Carson Judd on the mound here for the Cougs as we resume play here in the top of the sixth. And he will start things off against the Sun Devils first baseman, Jacob Tobias. 322 now on the year, four home runs. The first pitch from Judd outside, ball one. And Judd, the lefty. Takes a look over at first, now comes to the plate, and that is just misses outside, ball two, it's 2-0. Two oh. Judd, of course, not the only former Central Valley Bear in the athletic department for Washington State. 2-0, oh, same spot, just outside, now 3-0 oh to Tobias. Dylan Darling on the Cougar men's basketball team. Guard has played very sparingly after some early season injuries. Trying to get him a red shirt year is Kyle Smith. Here's the 3-0 pitch to Tobias. That one's in there for a strike. So it's 3-1 and one now. Again, Ryan Campos out of first base for ASU with that one-out single. And big cut from Tobias. Fouls it back into the netting. It's 3-2. and two. So even though Judd's just into the ball game, this is a bit of a big spot here. Full count to one of ASU's most dangerous hitters that he'll throw over to first, chasing Campos back to the bag. All right, Judd looks in. Here's the 3-2 delivery. Lawson just outside on an off-speed pitch at 76 miles per hour, and Tobias trots down to first, while Campos makes his way over to second. So, two on, and just one out here, still in the sixth for Carson Judd. And that brings up Nick McClain. He has reached base three times without the benefit of a hit. Walked in the first, walked in the third, and was hit by a pitch in his last appearance in the fourth. Judd, first pitch to McClain. That gets away from Morrow, and the runners will both advance. So now, two men in scoring position. A ball from Judd down in the dirt. Morrow couldn't keep it in front of him. Choate is out of the dugout already. I think we're going to have a pitching change here again. Uh, maybe to get a better matchup here against the right-handed hitting McLean. And yes, it does look like we will have a pitching change. So why don't we take another time out? We'll tell you who's coming out of the bullpen right now for the Cougs after this. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. The Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cooks! 
All right, Duke Brotherton taking warm-up pitches here for the Cougs. But before we get to more on Duke, let's pause 10 seconds for stations to identify themselves. All right, so a quick hook for Carson Judd as the left-hander was brought in for specific reasons, but uh, walked Jacob Tobias, and then a wild pitch allowed runners to advance, and quickly, Nathan Choate decides to go back to the bullpen and bring the right-hander, Duke Brotherton, into the ballgame. Six-foot-five, 217-pound senior out of Mercer Island High School on the west side of the state on the season. Uh, he is 3-1. and one. This will be his eighth appearance for the Cougs. He has started two games. Brotherton with a 4.56 ERA and 23 and two-thirds innings pitch. He's allowed 25 hits, 12 runs, all of them earned. 20 strikeouts versus 11 walks on the year. So he inherits a difficult situation here with runners on second and third and just one out. We'll see if Brotherton can help the Cougs work out of a jam. They did so well to take the lead from the Sun Devils. You'd hate to see them uh, give it back up to them here in the top of the sixth. All right, Brotherton done with his warm-up pitches. And Nick McLean steps back into the batter's box. And again, it is Campos out there at third, Tobias on at second, first pitch, misses low, ball two. So again, the first pitch of McLean's at bat came from Judd. It got away from him for ball one. Now Brotherton with the first, his first pitch to McLean is two and oh. That one fouled toward the Cougar dugout to make it two and one. All right, Brotherton, the big righty. With the 2-1 delivery now to Nick McClain, lifted in the center field. Swartz is back toward the wall. He's going back. It's over his head and off the wall. Two runs are going to come in and score, and ASU is going to tie this ball game on a big hit from Nick McClain. Dead center field, Swartz was back on it, but it hit too high up the wall for him to handle. It is 400 feet to straightaway center field here at Bailey Brayton, and he nearly had a home run on that one. Instead, the game is now tied at six on the two run. What are they gonna call it? I'm, I'm thinking a double and then advance a third on the throw. No, they do call it a triple. It's a two-run triple from Nick McLean to tie this game. Campos and Tobias both come around to score, and just like that, it's 6-6. Six six. First pitch, a strike to Ethan Mendoza. Here comes the second. Big cut, and it is chopped back behind home plate, 0-2. So Brotherton goes fastball, changeup, slider. Let's see what he goes to here, trying to get strike three. Fastball outside, got him swinging. And that's a big out for the Coos because it's two down here in the frame. And that's going to bring up Isaiah Jackson, one of the only Sun Devil hitters who hasn't found much success here today. Flew out in the first, struck out in the third, and then grounded out in the fifth. First pitch from Brotherton, just misses the outside corner, 1-0. and 6-6 six, six here in the top half of the sixth inning. Been an entertaining ball game so far. 1-0 to Jackson, swing and a miss. He does not get cheated at the plate. Jackson taking a big cut at that one, and the count goes even here at 1-1. One and one.
That one misses outside and low, so two and one now to the center fielder, Jackson. Brotherton, the 2 1 offering, fouled straight back, and the count goes even here at 2 and 2. Brotherton, one strike away from getting out of this inning without any further damage. Here comes the 2 2. Put on the ground. Park ranges to his right, throws back to first, and gets the out. And the Cougs get out of the inning here, but not before ASU pushes two runs across on Nick McLean's two-run triple. We go to the bottom of the six. We are tied at six. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. All right, we are back live here in Pullman, and it is tied at six here as we play in the bottom of the sixth inning. ASU, six runs on 11 hits and no errors. The Cougs with six runs on eight hits and one error. And leading things off here for Washington State in the bottom of the frame is gonna be the designated hitter, Logan Johnstone. Johnstone, no, excuse me, we have got a pinch hitter. It's going to be Griffin Sotomayor stepping in for Logan Johnstone. At the DH spot, get you some numbers here on Sotomayor here in just a minute. Here's the first pitch on the way, swing and a miss. Sotomayor out of Turlock, California. Batting 300 on the year in limited action. Does have one home run, though. And that one is lifted foul and well out of play. 0-2. Oh the lefty, Ben Jacobs, still on the mound here for ASU as he came on in relief of Thomas Burns last inning. 0-2 to Sotomayor, in there for a strike. He took it looking, and he's down on strikes after three pitches. And the leadoff man retired here in the sixth. All right, that's going to bring up Nate Swartz. who takes a ball, ball one, who doubled home a run back in the fifth, the first run of the ball game for Washington State, and helped start that six run explosion. That ball down in the dirt gets away from the catcher, Campos, and it's two and oh. Here's the 2-0 to Swartz. Big cut, misses though, and it's 2-1. and one. Swartz now batting 351 on the year. He's driven in 17 runs. That one just misses inside, 3-1 and one here to Swartz.
Jacob sets. Here's the 3 1. Swartz a swing and a miss. Count goes full here at 3 and 2. Swartz 351. We mentioned on base 442. Slugging 622 now in the year. The 3 2 to the Kook center fielder and it's fouled back into the netting. We'll do it again. The lights have been on for a while here at Bailey Brayton, but uh, now that darkness is starting to set in a little bit, they're really illuminating the field. Another big cut from Swartz, and he goes down swinging here. So back-to-back -back strikeouts from Jacobs, and quickly two down for the Cougs in the inning. That's going to bring up the second baseman, Crew Park. Now Park grounded out back in the third and then was credited with an RBI when he brought home Swartz on the sacrifice fly for the second run of the inning for the Cougs. Back in the fifth. Park batting 262 on the year. That's inside. Ball one. Park outstanding with the glove. Get you his fielding stats here in just a second. Uh, that pitch in there for a strike, so the count is even at one and one. And the clouds have opened up here a little bit, and the rain is coming down here in Pullman. See a few fans scattering for uh, some cover here. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Well, inside the park, and the count is now two and one on the in the at-bat. That just misses low, ball three. So three and one against the Cougs second baseman. Talked about those fielding stats. Outstanding with the glove, 957 fielding percentage for a second baseman. Swung on and put on the ground, but to the second baseman, Mendoza, who catches on a hop, fires over to first, and the side is retired as the Cougs go one, two, three for the first time in this ball game. We'll be back to play the seventh after this. This is Washington State Baseball from Learfield. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. All right, welcome back to rainy Pullman, Washington. We mentioned the clouds have opened up and uh, it's really starting to come down here in the seventh. Duke Brotherton has finished with his warm-up pitches and leading things off here for the Sun Devils in the seventh is Jax Ryan. Jax struck out in the second and third and then doubled back in the fifth. You can probably even hear the pitter-patter of the rain on our crowd mic here. First pitch to Ryan. Just missed inside, ball one. Next pitch. I guess it got a piece of the, the handle of his bat. So it's a strike, it's one and one. 
Well, this does say, again, according to the weather app, depending on how reliable you want to take that for, that the rain is expected to stop in about 14 minutes' time. Brotherton's third pitch was a ball. Two and one now to Jax Ryan. Here comes the next offering. That just misses low. Three and one. We're tied at six in the top of the seventh. This Pac-12 contest between ASU and WSU lost an outside ball four. So Jax Ryan with a leadoff walk here, and that brings up Steven Ondina, the shortstop. On Dina, batting 306 on the year. First pitch from Brotherton. He squares the bunt, but he pops it up. And boy, Joey Kramer almost was able to make a play on that in foul territory. But it lands about a step in front of him. And so the only harm is that it's a strike to on Dina. Andina transferred from Florida International, but he's originally from Puerto Rico. Squares the bunt again. Again, pops it up. Brotherton makes the easy catch and almost had a chance to fire over to first for a double play. So two poorly executed bunt attempts from Andina, and the Cougs have their first out of the inning. Okay, so that thing's send things back to the top of the lineup for Harris Williams. Williams, one for four with a double, but is also struck out twice. He squares to bunt, and that is bunted foul towards the Cougar dugout, 0-1. Sun Devils looking to manufacture a run here after putting the leadoff man aboard with the walk. Perhaps thinking that seven innings might be uh, an official game here if this rain continues, but as I just told you, it sounds like things should taper off here in the next few minutes and then become dry again shortly. Brotherton fired over to first base and now sets for the 0-1 to Harris Williams. Taken inside, ball two, 0-2. Excuse me, one and one. Williams, dangerous hitter though, 333 on the year, three home runs. Here's the 1-1, one -one. it is lined foul down the right field line and the count stays one and two. Brotherton sets. Here's the one two to Williams swung on and chopped foul down the right field side again. So the same Sun Devil who jumped out of the dugout to get the last ball is still out there and he'll be able to pick up a second one <laughs> on his way back in. But Cougar fans who brought their rain ponchos are certainly glad they did here. Here's Brotherton's one, two on the way to Williams. Looked like a planned pitch out, but Morrow held on to it and did not fire over to first base because Joey Kramer was not covering the bag. Brotherton sets again. The 2-2 two -two to Williams. Swung on and put right back at the middle. Russell on it. Shovels to Park and then fires over to first. Not in time for the double play, but Russell's able to get the lead off or the lead runner down. Ryan at second. A nice uh, defensive play by the Cougar shortstop. 
So Harris reaches on the fielder's choice, but Ryan is out at second. So two down here in the seventh. And Brotherton can get out of the inning if he can take care of Brandon Compton. Easier said than done, though. Compton, three for four with two doubles and a single so far in this ballgame. Brotherton takes a look over at first again. And delivers outside ball one. We're tied at sixth in the seventh inning. Here's the 1-0, swung on and fouled back. Compton taking a big, big cut on that one. Fires over to first. Just to chase Williams back to the bag. And the 1-1 one, one is fouled back and out of play. And the count goes to one and two now against Compton. The one, two, another planned pitch out, but Harris Williams makes it back to the bag before a throw comes from Morrow again. So two and two now for Duke Brotherton against Brandon Compton. The rain has slowed considerably here in the last couple minutes. Runner goes, fires into Second base, but uh, Russell not able to keep a glove on it and a stolen base now for Harris Williams. Oh, did they catch him off the bag? I beg your pardon. I looked down at my notes here for a second and the Cougs are trotting off the field. I think what must have, Willie Bloomquist is upset and he's having a talk about it right now with Christopher Gonzalez, the home plate umpire. I think what they must be saying, and I'll see if I can take a look at the replay here while we do this, that Williams must have gotten caught off the back after sliding in safely and Chase Park must have picked up the ball and tagged him. Bloomquist still arguing the play But he's, he's not really liking the explanation from Christopher Gonzalez. We'll see if we can get a better explanation for you when we return. We're going to take a break. It's tied at six as we head to the bottom of the seventh. A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. It's time to bring the big game to your backyard with spring savings on steel. Our AK Homeowner System battery tools start at just $199.99. Find yours at over 10,000 local dealers. Steel is a proud supporter of your Washington State Cougars. Real steel. Find yours. All prices SNW SRP. All right, we're still trying to wait to see a replay to figure out what exactly happened uh, to end the top half of the seventh inning. But 
Uh, nevertheless, we're going to the bottom of the frame, still tied at six, and Ben Jacobs still on the mound here for ASU in relief. I'm trying to get an explanation right now. Batter interference. Bobby Allworth from the Sports Information Department says, yeah, they think batter's interference must have been the call, too, but uh, it still is not updated in the live scoring. Well, no, it, actually, now it does say Harrison Williams out at second, caught stealing interference. So that's the official scoring there uh, in the stat broadcast. So the Cougs dodge a bullet I guess you can say and will now look to take the lead back here in the bottom of the seventh as Max Hartman will lead things off for Washington State just a either way a bizarre play to end that half of the inning so Hartman takes the ball now here comes the second pitch from Jacobs that's in there for a strike it's one and one again the rain's still coming down not quite as hard as it was just a few minutes ago Here's the 1-1. One, one. Hartman showed bunt, but pulled it back. Hartman one for three on the day. Fly outs in the first and fifth, and a single in the third. That's in there for a strike, so it's two and two now. Ben Jacobs, the lefty, has now worked one in the third innings in relief. Here's the 2-2. Swung on, lifted, fair, shallow left field. Ondina calling off his third baseman, Ryan, and he makes the play for the first out of the inning. So one down here for the Cougs in the seventh. And that brings up the shortstop, Kyle Russell. Russell walked and scored on the two-run homer from Casey Taggart back in the fifth. And that's inside, ball one to Russell. Kyle batting 270 on the year. 24 hits on the season, including eight doubles. Off-speed in there for a strike, it's one and one. One one to Russell, swing and a miss over the top of another breaking ball at 78 miles per hour, and it's one and two. Jacobs, as we mentioned, a sophomore out of Huntington Beach, California. Here's the one two, and that is line foul down the right field side. And the count remains here at one and two. One, two to Russell. Just misses low. Count goes even, two and two. It's six to six. Coos getting all six of their runs in the bottom of the fifth. Here comes the two, two pitch to Russell. Swung on and lined back and towards the clubhouse on the roof of the clubhouse, actually. Might have skipped into the intersection toward the uh, loading bays there at Beasley Coliseum across the street. All right. The count is 2-2 against Russell now. Off-speed pitch up high for ball three. Three and two. Russell, the lefty, sets. Here's the 3-2 delivery. Almost hit Russell, but nevertheless, it's inside. And Russell will take the base. So a one-out walk. And that brings up Kaysen Taggart, who hit that two-run homer to light the crowd of fire back in the fifth. It just kept carrying and carrying over the wall. Attack. 
outside on the first pitch to Taggart, and it's 1-0. So Taggart two for three, a single, the two run homer and a strikeout. Next pitch, down the middle, Taggart was taken. It's one and one. There's the one one outside, ball two. Taggart, we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, homered twice in Tuesday's win over Seattle U. He's got three home runs already this week. And continues to lead the team now with six home runs on the season. All right, here comes the 2-1 now to Case and Taggart. Down the middle of the plate for a strike. Taggart was taken again. The count goes even at two and two. So one on and one out here for the Cougars in the bottom half of the seventh. Tied at six here with Arizona State. Jacobs, 2-2 two -two delivered. Now nope, he's going to fire over to first to chase Russell back. Kyle back in plenty of time. Russell, or excuse me, Jacobs crouches on the mound. Now the 2-2 delivery is swing and a miss for Taggart. He's down on strikes for the second time in this ball game. And two outs now in the inning for Washington State. First baseman number six, Joey Kramer. Joey Kramer comes to the plate now. He's also two for three on the day. Struck out in the first, singled in both the fourth and fifth innings. He's now batting an even 333 on the year. 28 hits in 84 at bats. That ball gets away from the catcher. Not far enough, though, for Russell to take second base. He'll head back to first. Umpire inspects the ball, then tosses it over towards the Cougs dugout. And Kramer. Will set with a 1 0 count and takes a strike for strike one. It's one and one. All right, here's Jacobs, the ASU lefty, going to fire over to first again. Russell, not really leading off by much at all over there at first. Nowadays, with the pitch count, pitchers will do that sometimes just to reset the pitch count. And here comes the 1-1. One -one. Pop high up in the air. Campos with his mask off back towards the netting, and he makes the play in foul territory for the third out of the inning. We're going to go to the eighth after this. The Cougs and Sun Devils all tied at six. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. That to-do list you have needs one more thing. Chill. It's an easy thing to do. Just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light and chill. Take the afternoon off and binge watch anything. Go to happy hour and stay for a couple hours. Who's counting anyways? Or hang out with just your dog because you've had enough human interaction this week. Whatever you do, do it with a Coors Light. Mountain cold refreshment made to chill. 2024 Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Celebrate responsibly. All right, we are still tied at six here as we move to the bottom half of the seventh inning here in Pullman. Uh, looks like the rain has subsided here. And... 
I'm, I'm getting an update here now from Bobby Allworth in the Sports Information Department. The the play that ended uh, the Sun Devils' half of the what was that? The sixth inning uh, was called a strikeout, not interference. Okay, I guess that's the way it goes in the books. Duke Brotherton remains on the mound here for Washington State. He is already gone one and two thirds innings. Uh, and thrown 25 pitches over that span. So leading things off here. Uh, in the eighth will be Ryan Campos, the catcher. And starts off with a ground ball to the shortstop, Russell, who gathers it, fires over to first, and Kyle Russell is going to make that play. 10 times out of 10, so one up and one down here for the Sun Devils in the eighth. And that brings up the first baseman, Jacob Tobias. Just trying to update my score sheet to reflect that strikeout rather than batter interference to end the inning back in the seventh for the Sun Devils. All right, so Tobias takes outside for ball one. Duke Brotherton so far very solid in relief here for the Cougs. Big swing and a miss, or I should say foul tip to Tobias. Just got a piece of it. It's one and one. That one outside with the fastball at 91. Count goes to two and one. Just misses outside again to Tobias, and now it's three and one. Brotherton's 3-1 offering now. Swung on and lifted into right center field. Swartz ranging over to his left and will make the play near the warning track. So two outs here now for the Sun Devils in the eighth. Tobias hit it well, but Swartz has good speed in center field and was able to make that play pretty easily in right center. So Nick McLean to the plate now, who's really given the Cougs all kinds of fits today. He has not been retired so far in this ballgame. Walked in the first, walked in the third, was hit by a pitch in the fourth, and tripled in the sixth. And he lifts one into left center field. Taggart on the run towards the warning track. It's off the wall. And McLean has back-to-back -back extra base hits for ASU. A two-out double here in the eighth. Taggart baseman number two. You know, the flags aren't showing much wind, but that's at least the third time we've seen a ball really carry out towards left or left center field. Uh, McLean didn't hit that one particularly hard, but it just kept carrying and then just sort of caromed off the base of the wall. Taggart really did not have a chance to make a play on it. Here's Ethan Mendoza now with a man on second with two outs. Big swing, he lifts it high into the air. Will Cole Kramer have a chance to make a play in front of the dugout? He does, and that's the third out of the inning. Duke Brotherton gets out of a bit of a two-out jam and will go to the top of the eighth, still tied at six here at Bailey Brighton Field in Pullman. Hey Cougs, life doesn't stop at retirement. Bishop Place has a wide range of activities, social events, and fitness options depending on your interests. We have many options to explore depending on the level of care you need. Bishop Place also has housekeeping, dining, and transportation services. Less worry, less chores, more life, and more choices. Visit us on the web at bishopplace.net or call to schedule your tour today. 509-334-9488. We can't wait to see you. 
A lot goes into Washington State athletes reaching peak performance for game day, including the right nutrition. At Wilbur Ellis, we know that healthy crop performance requires the same attention to nutrition as an athlete. That's why we use benchmark data points to maximize crop productivity through nutrient efficiency. For 100 years, family-owned Wilbur Ellis has been partnering with Washington's farmers to grow healthier crops. That is the winning ag experience for Cougar Nation, locally provided by Wilbur Ellis. We have a good one here in Pullman. We are tied at six in the bottom of the eighth inning. 20 hits combined between these two clubs. 12 for the Sun Devils, eight for Washington State. Order, earn, enjoy. It's that easy to earn free food with My McDonald's Rewards. Get exclusive offers and rack up rewards. Download the McDonald's app today. We've got another pitching change here now for Arizona State. Into the game is... Number 54, Ryan Schieffer. Schieffer is a six foot three, 107 pound junior right hander out of Gilbert, Arizona. Went to Central Arizona College. He's thrown seven and 17 and two thirds innings so far this season. ERA rock solid at 1.02, 23 strikeouts and just 10 walks on the year. Coming to the plate for the Cougs here in the bottom of the eighth will be the catcher, Jacob Morrow. He'll be followed by the third baseman, Cole Kramer, and the designated hitter who pinch hit uh, for Logan Johnstone in Griffin Sotomayor. And Morrow steps to the plate here now. Hit a two-run homer to cap that six-run inning for the Cougs back in the fifth. Schieffer takes a look into his dugout and now sets on the mound. The righty's first pitch to Morrow outside for ball one. 91 miles per hour on the gun. Third pitcher into the ballgame for ASU here so far today. And that one way outside gets away from the catcher Campos. It's 2-0. Oh. The rain has started back up again here. It had let up seemingly at least for a few minutes and now it's coming down again. Moro ahead in the count here. 2-0. and oh. That one is in there for a strike. 92 miles per hour for Schieffer. Again, we're tied at six here in the eighth. Down low, ball three, three and one. So a nice little hitter's count here for the catcher, Jacob Morrow, who's had a good day. Two for three with that two-run homer. And that one is fouled, backing out of play. And the count goes full here at three and two. On Wednesday's win over Seattle U, Morrow doubled and scored. The series finale against Utah. Homer had three runs better in. That one is down in the dirt for ball four. So Morrow draws a leadoff walk. He's on base for the third time in this ball game. And the third baseman, Cole Kramer, will now come to the plate. Kramer still looking to reach base for the first time here today. Struck out in the second, struck out in the fourth, and then grounded out in the fifth. Kramer batting 392 now on the year. Squares the bunt, then pulls it back. Morrow retreats back to the first base bag. Cole Kramer, a six foot one, 190 pounder out of Arlington, Washington. The 
the 1-0. Just misses. Ball two. The catcher Campo is now out to the mound now. Wants to make sure he's got his signal straight with his reliever, Schieffer. Cole Kramer enters this weekend tied for second in the Pac-12 in hits with 31. Fourth in hitting at 408 coming into the game. Fifth in on-base percentage at 489. And tied for eighth in doubles with seven. And also tied for 10th in stolen bases, or excuse me, total bases with 45. Pretty phenomenal production for the transfer from Lynn Benton Community College. All right, here's Schieffer now with the 2-0 to Kramer. Up high, ball three. Kramer was showing bunt again, then pulled it back and took the ball from Schieffer. So Schieffer struggling a bit with his control here in this relief appearance. He already walked Morrow. Now it's 3-0 to Cole Kramer. That one's in there for a strike. Three and one. Late in this ball game, tied at six, you know, coaching staff might be thinking one more run could do it. Here's the 3-1 to Kramer. Swung on, lifted high. I think it's going to get out of play. It will be out of play. Back into the stands on the right field side. Somebody's going to get themselves a souvenir. And the count goes full here at three and two. Boy, the Cougs would love to have the first two runners aboard here in the eighth. Moro already on first with a walk. Here's the 3-2 from Schieffer, swung on and hit in the right field. That's going to get down for a base hit. And the Cougs have two on with nobody out here in the bottom of the eighth. Cole Kramer pumps his fist toward the Cougar dugout as he advances Moro on the base hit to right. All right, so here comes Griffin Sotomayor. Came on as a pinch hitter for Logan Johnstone back in the sixth and struck out. Let's see if he can get it done here in his second at bat. Sotomayor out of Turlock High School in Northern California. Back in 2022, rated the number three catcher in all of California. And it was on Wednesday against Seattle U that he hit his first career home run, a two-run shot to right field in that win here at Bailey Brayton. So a big spot here for the young fella. Chance to come up clutch. First pitch, a strike, 92 miles per hour from Schieffer. Sotomayor checked the swing there. So we've got Morrow on at second, Kramer on at first, and Sotomayor here at the plate with a chance to give the Cougs a lead. Schieffer wheels around to second, but no throw. And he'll now step back on the bag. Six, six, all tied up here between ASU and WSU in the bottom of the eighth. Here's the 0-1 to Sotomayor outside, almost got away from the catcher Campos. That would have allowed both runners to advance. Campos had to make a really good diving stab to his right to keep that from going back to the or going back to the wall behind home plate. All right, Schieffer sets. Here's the 1-1 to Sotomayor, swing and a miss. And it's one and two. That one coming at 83 miles per hour. Now we've got, it looks like the rain has stopped, but the wind is really blowing. It's blowing back toward home plate, which is not great news for batters. Here's the one, two. Swing and a miss, and Sotomayor goes down on strikes, and the Cougs have one out here in the eighth. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for the sophomore in two pinch hit appearances. But that brings Nate Swartz to the dish. He is one for three 
with a double as part of that sixth run, fifth inning. First pitch to Swartz. Misses down low for a ball. Schieffer takes a look back at Morrow at second. Now wheels back around, but again, no throw. Just kind of chasing Morrow back. Not usual for catchers to be the types to steal a base. Morrow has yet to steal one this season. Here's the 1-0. Just misses. Ball two, 2-0. Two Schieffer has thrown six, or excuse me, 18 pitches already against just three batters. Here's the 2-0 to Swartz, up high, ball three. All right, big spot for Nate Swartz here. 3-0 count, tied at six, bottom of the eighth, two men on. Here's the pitch from Schieffer, outside, ball four. Walked him on four pitches to load the bases with one out. And that's going to bring up the second baseman, Crew Park. Park, 0 for 3 on the day, but did bring in a run with a sacrifice fly back in the fifth. We have a mound visit here for ASU. We'll see if this is going to be it for Ryan Schieffer or if they'll stick with the right-hander against Crew Park. Christopher Gonzalez, home plate umpire, making his way out to the mound to tell him to, all right, let's break it up here, fellas. Get back to playing. And it looks like Schieffer will remain in the ball game, at least for now. So... Big opportunity here for the Cougs. We are tied at six in the bottom of the eighth inning against Arizona State. Cougs have the bases loaded here with one out. Morrow walked to start the inning. Cole Kramer followed with a single. Griffin Sotomayor struck out and then Nate Swartz drew another walk to load him up. Here's the first pitch to Park in there for a strike. Fastball at 93, catches the outside corner of the plate against the right-handed hitting second baseman. Righty versus righty matchup here. The 0-1 to Park. Checked his swing and it's in there for a strike. So Schieffer suddenly seems to have found his spot and he's ahead of the count here, 0-2. We got a timeout at the plate. Park will step out of the box here real quick. Coos would love to win the opening game of this series against the Sun Devils. Schieffer with the 0-2 to Park. Swung on, put on the ground, but right to the first baseman who's gonna fire home for one, and then no throw back to first for that. So they cut down Moro at the plate. And there's two outs now in the inning. So Park reaches on a fielder's choice. Kramer and Swartz both advance on the play. And that bring ups, brings up Max Hartman. Base hit could score two here. First pitch to Hartman. Take it high and outside, ball one. So the bases are still loaded, but now there are two outs for the Cougs here in the bottom of the eighth. This ball game is all tied at six between Washington State and Arizona State. The 1 0 to Hartman. Ooh, just caught the outside corner of the plate, and it's one and one. Hartman, the lefty, again came in batting. 366 on the year. T 
team high 23 RBIs. Here's the 1-1 one -one put on the ground. Right to the shortstop who makes the play. Not going to be in time. And a run scores. Ondina had a range to his right. And the throw one hop the first baseman to bias. And that allowed the runner to come around and score. It's Cole Kramer with the go ahead run. And the Cougs have the lead again here at seven to six. An infield base hit scores the go ahead run. Let's see if the Cougs can add to it. Kyle Russell with a swing and a miss here on the first pitch. Base is still loaded here with two outs in the eighth. Russell takes up high, ball one, one and one. A one run lead is good, but a two or three run lead would be even better for Washington State here. Pitch back to second, not nearly in time. Trying to run the little pickoff play there where the second baseman comes in without the runner seeing him. All right. The 1-1 one -one to Kyle Russell. Put on the ground, but right to the third baseman. He bobbles it, and there's no play. Another run scores, and the Cougs have a two-run lead. They're going to have to call that an error on Jax Ryan, even though that was a tough play. He bobbled it in front of them, and then it rolled into foul territory, and then he had no chance to catch uh, Nate Swartz before he touched home plate. So now it's eight to six Cougs. And again, the bases are still loaded here. Kaysen Taggart, who had the two-run homer back in the fifth, with a chance to blow this one open. Eight, six Cougs now in the bottom of the eighth. First pitch to Taggart, outside. Ball one. Next pitch, down low, ball two. And all of a sudden, I've lost my stat broadcast to give me the live stats here. Here's Schieffer, 2-0 to Taggart. Well high, and it's 3-0. and And the Coos can drive in another one here with a ball outside of the strike zone. The 3-0 to Taggart. Taken all the way, and it's in there for a strike. Three and one. The 3-1 to Taggart now swung on a foul back into the netting behind home plate. And the count goes full here at three and two. Case and Taggart looking to blow it open. Three two pitch fouled. Might have been off his foot and back behind home plate. And we'll do it again here with the count full. The bases are full of Cougs. They've already pushed two runs across here in the frame, looking for more. The 3-2 to Taggart takes for strike three, and the Sun Devils finally get out of the inning, but not before the Cougs push two more runs across the plate to take an 8-6 lead into the top of the ninth. Washington State three runs away, excuse me, three outs away from a Pac-12 victory here at home. We'll be right back. 
the Clearwater River Casino and Lodge proudly supports Washington State University Athletics. The premier venue for events and entertainment located four miles east of Lewiston, Idaho. Come hit the jackpot with us with over 600 gaming machines, saltwater pool, restaurant, and giant screens in the stadium sports bar. Owned and operated by the Nez Perce Tribe, our hospitality is legendary. Stay, play, and get away with the Clearwater River Casino. Go Cougs! Boost Collaborative is a proud sponsor of Cougar Basketball and is a proud supporter of people with disabilities on the Palouse. For over 50 years, Boost Collaborative has been here to help families and their toddlers meet developmental milestones. For youth and adults, Boost provides job placement, on-the-job training, and follow-along supports. Now you can play a part in Boost's success through your donations and purchases at Palouse Treasures Thrift Store in Pullman. Boost Collaborative, empowering people with disabilities on the Palouse. Go Cougs! Six Washington State as we head to the top of the ninth inning before we tell you who's on to try to close things out. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification here on the Washington State Sports Network. All right, it's going to be number 41, Chase Grillo, the redshirt senior. Out of the Tri-Cities, the big right-hander is tied for 10th all-time at WSU with 10 career saves. He's the guy you want up there when you're trying to close it out. So far this season, he has made eight appearances. This will be his ninth. He's pitched 12 innings, given up nine hits, five runs, all of them earned, 20 strikeouts against just five bases on balls. He has a 3.75 ERA. Again, the Cougs three outs away from winning this series opener against the Arizona State Sun Devils when it frankly didn't look great early as the Sun Devils took a 4-0 lead at the uh, end of three innings, scoring two runs in the first and one each in the second and third. But the Cougs exploded for six runs in the fifth, including two run homers from Cason Taggart and Jacob Morrow. ASU came back to tie it in the top of the sixth, but the Cougs just pushed two runs across in the bottom of the eighth to take an 8-6 eight, lead, and now just need three more outs to close this out. Grillo will be facing Isaiah Jackson, the center fielder, to lead things off, and he starts him with a strike on the outside corner. Jackson 0 for 4. A flyout, a strikeout, and two ground outs so far on the day. Grillo sets, and the 1 0 delivery sawed him off, and it's foul up the left field line. Cole Kramer was uh, up to take it on a hop, but not before it had already gone foul. He might have had time to throw him out at first had he been able to make that play in foul territory. All right, Grillo sets as Jackson had to make the long walk back from first base as he was all the way up the line. The 0-2 outside, ball one, one and two. Grillo sets again. Here comes the one-two to Jackson. Swung on and chopped back over the pitcher's mound. Crew Park on it on a run. Throws the first. Can't get it out of his glove. And Jackson reaches on an infield single to just add a little bit of intrigue here to this matchup. And looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter here. In Trey Cruz. So Trey Cruz pinch hitting for Jax Ryan. And 
That one is fouled out of play. Excuse me, it's not Trey Cruz. It's Kien Vu. Sophomore out of San Diego, Point Loma High School. Batting 400 on the year, 0-1. Just misses on the outside corner. Kent goes even here at one and one. So leadoff man aboard here in Jackson as Grillo tries to close it out for the Cougs. Off-speed pitch just misses outside. Ball two, two and one. Grillo really effective. He's run that fastball up there up to like 95 miles per hour, but then he comes with that slider that just missed, and that came over at about 83. There's the slider again at 82, and again, just misses outside. Not by much. Count goes to three and one now, and Grillo does not want to lose Vu here and put two men on with nobody out. Grillo, the 3-1. That one is ripped into right field for a base hit. Jackson's going to be able to take third, and Vu rounds, uh, rounds first and has the second. A one-out double for Kien Vu. And the Sun Devils, just like that, have the tying run in scoring position with nobody out here in the top of the ninth. Not exactly the way Nathan Jote envisioned this ninth inning going with your best reliever on the mound in Chase Grillo. An infield single by Isaiah Jackson and then a double to right by the pinch hitter Kien Vu. And that brings up Eamon Lance, another pinch hitter. He's in for Steven Andona. And Grillo starts him off with a strike. Here's the 0-1, shot foul, so 0-2. And, and Grillo would love nothing more than a strikeout here, or at least something that doesn't get out of the infield. Lance on the scoreboard showing no stats on the season, so perhaps one of his first appearances. Big swing and a miss for strike three. Morrow throws over to first just to make sure, but a big strikeout, exactly what Grillo was hoping for there. So the Cougs finally have one out here in the ninth. Again, they lead it eight to six, but the Sun Devils started this inning with an infield single and a double. And Cho is out of the dugout, wants to have a word with his closer. I don't know if he's going to give Chase the hook here or not, but. Grillo shaking his head. Yes, yes, on the mound. Maybe telling him, I'm good, coach. I'm good. Leave me in. <clears throat> Again, it's been an entertaining ball game. 14 runs, 24 hits between the two teams. Grillo giving fist bumps to his infield, and he's going to remain out there to face Harris Williams. He is one for five on the day. Doubled and scored back in the second. He's also struck out twice. Grillo. A little low on that one. Moro keeps it in front. 1-0. Cook's making this thing interesting here in the ninth. Trying to hang on to a two-run lead, but with two runners in scoring position. And one out in the ninth. Grillo's 1-0 in there for a strike. One and one.
Grillo out of Kamayak in high school in Kennewick. Here comes the 1-1, up high. Two balls and a strike now here to Harris Williams. Williams, a transfer from USF, lifts one foul and out of play down the left field side. Back towards where my car is parked. Didn't hear any windows shattering or anything like that. So 2-2 now here to Harris Williams. Chase Grillo trying to close things out for the Cougs. The pitch swung on and chopped to Crew Park there at second. 1-1 one, one will score, but they do get Williams for the second out. So a big out there now. The score is 8-7, to seven, but the Cougs now have two outs in the frame, and the Sun Devils could be down to their final at bat. So Isaiah Jackson scores on the RBI ground out. Kien Vu advances to third, but more importantly, two outs in the inning. Here's Grillo's first pitch to Brandon Compton. Just misses outside, ball one. And this is a giant matchup. Compton already with two doubles and a single in this ball game, batting 365 on the year. The 0-1 to Compton. Swing and a miss over the top of that off-speed pitch from Grillo. The slider in there at 81 miles per hour. 1-1 one, one in the count. Vu really trying to come up the line here to try to throw Grillo off. Here comes the 1-1 one, one. inside for a strike. And the Cougs are one strike away from winning this series opener against the Sun Devils. 8-7, top of the ninth inning. One ball and two strikes against one of the Sun Devils' best hitters in Brandon Compton. The one-two pitch. Oh, they had to check down with a third base umpire to see if Compton went around. He says he did not, so the count goes to two and two. Cougs looking to improve to three and four in the Pac-12, 13 and eight overall. ASU trying to rally from behind in the ninth to take this series opener. Here comes the 2-2 from Grillo. Swing and a miss. Morrow will fire to first to make sure, but the Cougs have the victory here on the Friday night series opener. Eight to seven over the Sun Devils of Arizona State. Chase Grillo makes it interesting in the ninth, but pulls it out for his 11th career save. We'll be back with the post-game numbers after this. This is Washington State Baseball from Learfield. That to-do list you have needs one more thing.